Hello, Mace from Thailand here and today's video is going to be why I left the UK to move to Thailand. Now I've been in Thailand now for almost 10 years and I've got to say I've loved every minute of living here in Thailand. The UK was a great place to live but I knew 10 years before I retired that I was going to stop living in the UK and I wanted to live elsewhere in the world. And the reason for thinking that way was the last 10 years of my career in the fire brigade it changed my views on living in England because oh, it, there are so many things going wrong in my opinion in England. I live in a place in Thailand where I don't fear walking the streets. Crime is very very low and the feeling of well-being and happiness is much more than I ever ever had in the UK. So I'll tell you the reasons why I decided to, to leave the UK to live here in Thailand. As I say the story starts about 10 years before I retired so that was from 2000 up till 2010 when I retired. So the last 10 years of my career I went through the promotions and I did various things with regard to getting promoted in the fire brigade. So many people's views of the fire brigade is that we go out and put fires out and rescue people from cars. And now with modernisation the fire brigade has changed well beyond belief. Um, they do many, many, many things, not just put fires out and rescue people from trapped buildings and, or rescue cats from trees. In my last 10 years I was dealing with young offenders coming into prison, going out of prison and in various different states of that. People who have been caught for stealing cars and joyriding cars and injuring other people. Um, people who were violent, aggressive. The fire brigade was looked upon as a positive role model and we could give the message of society and basically if the police said it or the social workers or the probation officers said it it was two fingers up towards the establishment but the fire brigade had a unique method because we were sort of trusted in the community as being helpful people and we could sort of give the message that society wanted to give to these people e.g. stop committing crime, live a normal life and better yourself and over 10 years I had many many courses. Now I embrace this, I'm always one for helping others, always have been, always will be. But that hurt my conscience in some ways because helping others, I freely did it and I wanted to do it and I devised programs to do such things and I didn't care whether they've been to prison, going to prison or wherever, everybody deserves a chance. But my frustrations were towards the end of my career is that there was funding for these people. So basically the more crime you did the better rewards you got from the better treats and the better courses that you went on. So imagine a, somebody 14, 15 year old spending the day with a fire brigade, driving around in a fire engine, doing abseiling, many many things. The whole day was an enjoyable day for anybody who wanted to come to the fire station. We sort of did this thing for our own children. Our own children benefited from the fire service because we could show them things that many other children never ever got to see. But getting back to my example of these 14, 15 year old lads who have been in bother with the police created thousands and thousands of pounds worth of damage and, and basically been society's bad people. They spent the day with us at the fire brigade and they seen a positive result from it and some some people even got to spend a week with the fire brigade now that to me is a fantastic opportunity anybody any young child would jump at that opportunity to be able to do that but unfortunately it was only the bad lads that got to do this because there was funding for bad people people who were who caused crime and that to try and show them errors of their ways and try to steer them in the right direction. Now I've got no problems with that whatsoever. But I approached my management with regard to helping the people who did well at school, the people who deserved a break, people who deserved a little treat. But there was no funding for that. 
no funding for the good kids who tried the hardest. Maybe he's not the best at school, but tried the hardest. There's no rewards for them, apart from a pat on the back, well done young man, and let's see you do better next year. So I approached my management and I asked whether we could pick some of these achievers from the schools and give them also a good day at the fire service. But the answer was no, because there was no funding with them. And he said, we can't pay your salary and we can't, we can't bring them on to the fire brigade because there's no funding. So me and my co-workers said, we'll do it for free. We'll give these people a chance to be able to come and spend the day with the fire brigade for free. So it involved no payment, we do it for free and we give these kids, these achievers, these people who are doing good, a chance to be able to experience what these people who were doing bad got to get. Again the answer was no because we can't insure you. If you're working for free we can't insure you. So I said just pay me a pound. Pay me a pound and all the other lads a pound and we'll do it for free and we'll donate the pound that we get for doing this work to charity. So everything is totally free. The answer still came back no because of resources and equipment and one thing and another. That was the start of my feeling of how bad England was going. The criminals get rewarded and the people who do bad in society get rewarded with various trips. It's unbelievable. It opened my eyes as to what these people were getting. Again, everybody deserves help. I'm not against helping other people to reform their lives. But if the bad people get rewarded more than what the the good people get, then it's annoying. They got fishing trips, they got to fly in aeroplanes, they got to do many, many exciting things, all because they did bad to try and change their ways of thinking. When I was helping people in the fire brigade, we were going out putting free smoke detectors in everybody's houses. Everybody got a free smoke detector. And I remember going through a divorce um, and through bankruptcy, I ended up in a in an awful little flat just until I picked myself up again I was living in a, a not a very well nice area because it was a cheap flat I had no money because I'd gone through bankruptcy and I basically had to start again no help from the system no help from everybody else but me so I started again at rock bottom and I remember visiting one of these houses to put a free smoke detector in and me and the lad that I was with who were driving in a, our fire engine to this particular address and I'd never been to this place before and I think wow this is a quite a nice location knocked on the door and this young man full of tattoos skinny the typical chav uniform which is a pair of sweatpants no shirt full of tattoos open the door come in mate come in mate so I knew then what we were entering and we were there to put a, a free smoke detector up, which everybody in, it was entitled to, I had no problem with that. But we're also putting a drugs cabinet, a secure drugs cabinet into this person's house. So he was obviously a known drug taker as well. He was on methadone. And as part of the service for the social services, we also installed these drug cabinets to keep the drugs safe, methadone he was on. So I was the interviewing officer and I got all the details off this young man who had just come out of 10 months being in prison. Social services were trying to get him off the drugs and also to stop him from committing crime. So they placed him in this nice council house which was in a nice area to try and rehabilitate this young man into stop committing crime. He was on a drugs rehabilitation program as well where he got free methadone every day to stop him from taking heroin. His girlfriend also, who had a child, was also drug dependent. So both of them bringing up a child in a, in a nice area of a council estate, a nice house. Far better than the accommodation I was living in when I was working. Again, I've got no problems with society trying to help these young people and moving on with their lives. But how sad we live in a society that if you do good, none of this help is available for you. They try to take everything off you. So good luck to that young man. I, I have no idea whether he came off drugs, whether he became an upstanding member of the society or anything. But 
it just seemed to be if you do good you don't get rewarded but if you do bad there's very many programs that you can go on to also I was seconded to the Prince's Trust for a year and that involved having groups of young people from 16 up to 25 years old and putting them on a 12 week personal development program I've got to say I've always helped people, I always have done, I always will do but didn't realise helping people such as these people would be so hard it was a massive learning curve for me you had to be positive every day of the week they came into the, our classrooms on the Monday morning full of drugs from the weekend before didn't really want to be there, didn't really want to do anything and you always had to be positive for the full 12 weeks and then on a Friday they had gate fever and they just couldn't wait to get away from that was so challenging trying to get people into further education or jobs um, just move on with their lives what I learnt a lot from that as well is the benefit system in England is so so dependable people don't want to come off benefits because they rely on the benefits and once you come off benefits trying to get back on is more difficult than anybody could ever imagine so that's why people don't come off benefits because it's so dependable they know it's there every single week so this was my frustration with regard to living in England and moving to Thailand moving to Thailand it cost me money to live here I have to follow the rules or I can be deported from this country crime is next to zero but the crime here is very 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 low in fact the village that I'm living in now we've lived here for five years and the biggest crime that happened in this village in the last five years is that over a period of two or three weeks bananas were getting pinched from the banana plantation so that's our biggest crime in our village over the last five years our next door neighbours just give us a massive fruit that's what's neighbours, that's what it's like living in Thailand nice nice people that's what it's like living in, in Thailand, our next door neighbours just give us a big massive jackfruit just because we're neighbours, it's a wonderful place to live, Thailand living in the UK is totally totally different, crime is everywhere from pickpockets to stealing your phones to motorbikes crime has just gone through the roof in England so I don't listen to the police helicopter every day like I used to do when I lived in Redcar in England every day you could hear the police helicopters the amount of cars that were getting stolen and burnt out I had my own electrical business in, in England and my van got broke into two or three times totally maybe £10,000 worth of equipment had been stolen out of my van I was always the target because I always had Dewalty drills and Dewalty equipment so top quality equipment so many tradesmen get their equipment stolen been to many jobs and people had their vans broken into the vans stolen their equipment stolen over here in Thailand it's very very rare the crime rate is so low it's unbelievable in a poor country so what's the excuse people are getting benefits in England for them to survive but crime rate has gone through the roof so this is why I live in Thailand and I don't live in the UK anymore. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand, till the next video, bye for now.